Hi everyone, my name is Janelle and you're watching Everyday Jane where I make homemade delicious food, which is often inspired by the flavors of the Philippines. And I'm so excited because I'm bringing you a holiday classic, the Bingkang Malagit, which is a sticky coconut rice cake. And I can't wait to show you guys. Let's get started. Great, so let me introduce some of the main players of this sweet, sticky dessert. Uh, we're gonna be starting with a base of glutinous rice. So I love using this. This is the base of a lot of Filipino kakanin or rice-based desserts. And it creates such a lovely texture at the end. It's called glutinous rice, but that just means because it's really, really sticky, there's actually no gluten in the rice. Um, so I'm going to use two cups of glutinous rice and we're also gonna use coconut milk. It's a very common ingredient in the Philippines as well. So we'll use full fat coconut milk, good quality please. And we're also gonna use some dark brown sugar and a few also little ingredients, but that's kind of the basis of this dessert. So let's start with washing our rice. I'm going to to wash my rice uh, directly in the pot. So the way that I like to wash rice, I know a lot of people like to stick, um, put it, pour it in a colander, stick it under the faucet, but I like to pour it into a, whatever I'm, whatever vessel I'm using to cook it and do like a soak, we massage the rice <laughs> and we dump out the water and we do that a few times depending. So I usually do that about three to four times. My rice is all washed and now we're just going to start with the first step, which is to sort of pre-cook this rice. So I have two cups of rice and to that I'm also going to add two cups of water and I'm going to let this cook on the stove top for a little while. Uh, the key to this is to let it come to a boil, lower it down, put the lid on and wait 10 minutes. So you're just going to be letting the rice cook in really low heat, just letting it simmer in um, the water for about 10 minutes. And we don't wanna cook this rice and we wanna cook it until there's still a little bit of bite left to the rice. While my water is starting to come to a boil, I just wanted to talk a little bit about bibinka. So there are two types of bibinkas in Filipino cooking. There is one that's flour based and then this is different because it's rice Based. So this one's bibingkang malagit. Malagit means sticky, and that's because we're putting like really delicious coconut syrup right on the top to bake it. So this is a recipe actually that I got from my mom. Uh, she hand wrote it for me and took a picture and sent it over me to me so that I could make it for all of you. It's something that we enjoy all year round, but especially during special occasions, this is definitely one of the desserts on the table. So my rice has come up to a boil. Now I'm gonna turn down my stove top to about low just to have the rice simmer and not be boiling too vigorously and I'm going to put my lid on and turn on the timer to 10 minutes and then we'll see what it looks like then. So while my rice is par cooking I'm going to start on what I'm going to mix into this rice. So we are going to be using half a can or 200 milliliters of full fat coconut milk and to this we're going to be adding some brown sugar as I mentioned we're going to add three quarters of a cup of dark brown sugar, but really doesn't matter. You could use a lighter brown sugar if you would like, that's totally fine. Um, and I'm going to add it straight into this measuring glass that I have here with the coconut milk. And let me just stir that on up. Did I splatter? I think I did a little bit. <laughs> Whoopsie. So, I'm mixing this together. I'm actually gonna pop it in the microwave just to make sure that the granules have um, dissolved and you won't be getting any gritty crystallized sugar in your delicious sticky rice. All right, I'll be back in a minute. I'm gonna pop this in the microwave. So this has come out of the microwave and yeah, most of that sugar is really is dissolved. You wanna just give it that head start because I'm going to be pouring this into the rice as soon as it's finished and finishing um, cooking it right in this pot. What I also did while we were waiting was get a few other things prepared. So I turned my oven on and set it to 350 degrees. And I also prepared my baking dish. I'm actually using, which is a little bit non-traditional, a round pie dish for this, just because I love that it's glass and you can see up it. And I actually like cutting it into little cake triangle type slices rather than in the squares. I think it's a little bit fun and festive, but you can absolutely use an eight by eight baking dish for this, just as long as you grease it down 
really, really well. If you want, you could even use parchment as well. I'm confident that it's not gonna stick to the bottom too bad. So I just greased it with a bit of coconut oil um, and it'll be ready to go. So my rice, I believe is about done. So what I'm going to do is make sure the heat is right. It's about at a medium low and we're going to check on it, make sure that it's ready. You can see that most of that liquid has evaporated. There is just that little bit of liquid, but that's okay. I'm just going to make sure that it didn't all stick to the bottom. No, we've got a little bit of stickage, but not any more than you would when you're making rice. Um, so I'm just going to fluff my rice. I know that's a term fluffing the rice so that I don't break apart the granules and get this all mushy. And I'm actually going to taste a grain to see where we are. Yeah, that rice isn't fully cooked yet, but it's mostly there. So this is exactly where I want it. And now I'm gonna pour this yummy, yummy mixture that we made of the coconut milk and the brown sugar right into the rice. Ooh, that smells so good. And I'm gonna do a nice stir and incorporate all of these ingredients. So simple, rice, coconut milk, some brown sugar, and yet I'm real excited. <laughs> so just continue to cook out that liquid here. We added more in, right? So we wanna make sure that it's not too liquidy when we put it in our baking dish. Just continue to stir. This is literally gonna come together in a minute a minute on medium low heat. I'm getting exactly the consistency that I'm looking for. You can see it is kind of coming off in big globs, right? That is perfect. A lot of that liquid has evaporated. The rice is looking perfectly sticky and I can pour this into my pie dish now. Wow, it's real sticky. So now that the rice is in our baking dish, I'm just going to smooth it over here with my wooden spoon. This looks so good. This consistency, as it starts to cool, it's really firming up here. And you can actually get quite an even spread and level it off pretty nicely. I wish you guys could smell what this smells like here. It smells like coconut caramel. <laughs> So now is the time for the big finish, which is pouring a gorgeous uh, sauce on top of this. So if you watched my previous video, Coco Jam, what you can do is heat up the Coco Jam, use a cup of it, pour it all over the top, or you can do an alternate version, which is just using a half a can of coconut milk mixed with half a cup of brown sugar. Mix that together, pour it on top and bake it. The only difference is the second option is just gonna take a little bit longer in the oven in order to get that bubbly, dark brown, gorgeous color. So use whatever option works for you, whatever you have on hand, pour it on top and we'll do that now. So now I have my cocoa jam that I've made. I warmed it up so that it's quite liquid. So you don't want it to be too thick uh, because you want to be able to actually spread it on top of this babinka pretty easily. I actually had to thin mine out a little bit with a splash of coconut milk. So if you need to thin yours out with coconut milk, milk, whatever you need, um, absolutely do that too. So I'm gonna start by pouring this right on top of my babinka. So that is a cup of coconut jam. You just want to use the back of your spoon and give it a little bit of help. I think that looks about right. It's gonna even off a bit in the oven as well. And if you have someone in your life that you love a lot, they can lick the spoon. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew's smiling. <laughs> okay, so last but not least, um, a little trick that I like to do is just sprinkle a little bit of flaky salt right on top. This is 100% optional, of course, and not really traditional, but I'm taking a bit of liberty here. Hopefully that's okay with you, mom, <laughs> but just a bit. Okay, so now this goes in the oven. If you're using cocoa jam, this goes in the oven for 10 to 15 minutes. But if you're using the other topping that I told you about, just the coconut milk and brown sugar quickly mixed together and poured on top, it's gonna be a lot more liquid and it's gonna need some more time to cook. So you wanna just play that one by ear. Usually for me, it takes up to 30 minutes and then maybe I'll broil it at the end. So 350 degree oven and we're 10 to 15 minutes away from bibinga. 
I'll be back. So my bibinka is out of the oven and you know it's ready when it starts to bubble and the top starts to look like delicious lava then you know your bank is done. So this was in the oven for about 15 minutes, but I did spend about a minute and a half just broiling the top. So you could get it all bubbly and the top can slightly darken a bit more. All right, so let's cut into this. It's a bit early. It's only been out of the oven for maybe 10 minutes, but I'm really excited. So let's cut in and let's have a taste. It's always hard to get a clean cut, especially your first one, and especially when it's still hot, but it'll cut really nicely once it's cooled down. But come on, how do you resist, resist really warm bibinka? I know I can't. a little warm the last thing I want is um, hot caramel burning the top of my mouth oh my word if the idea of a rice dessert doesn't really appeal to you give this one a try it's really hard not to like especially if you're interested in things like rice puddings this is gonna be right up your street so delicious I want to take another bite I'll do it off camera but until then, I just wanted to say Merry Christmas to everybody, and I hope you have a wonderful holiday season. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video and in the new year. Bye.